So for my perfect simple starter, what I've got is a really simple onion pakora, and with that, I've got some just shop-bought mango chutney, which I'm just going to sexy up a bit with some chili, some garlic, and some curry leaves. Absolutely fantastic. My perfect simple starter is aloo tiki chana chaat, classic Bombay street food, potato cakes, tamarind chutney, yogurt, and a chickpea relish. Oh. Right, so you know chaat means to lick, so I'm hoping the judges will be <laughs> licking their plates. Ravinda starts by toasting coriander and cumin seeds in a dry pan. When you start smelling that fragrance, you know they're ready to take off. Before grinding in a pestle and mortar. I've got some potatoes, ready boiled, and I'm just going to stick those in my dish here. And to that, I'm going to start adding my spices, first of all. It doesn't have to be a smooth mash, that's not what we're after here. Ravinda then adds chopped red onion and green chilli. She then roughly chops garlic. You know, this dish itself, where did you first experience it? My mother's kitchen. It was just one of those things I grew up eating. She adds the garlic to a bowl and grates a large piece of ginger. Ginger, garlic and chilli, it's like kind of the triumvirate of Epitome Indian cooking. Epitome of Indian cooking, isn't it? Ravinda adds chopped coriander to the potato mixture along with black pepper, breadcrumbs and gram or chickpea flour, which is widely available from supermarkets. She crushes the ingredients together with her hands. Don't be afraid of getting messy. And rests in the fridge to firm up while she gets going with her tamarind chutney. I've got some shop-bought tamarind concentrate. Now, you can do this from the block or fresh tamarind and boil it down but it's so much easier when it's already done for you. Ravinda then adds ground cumin, red chilli powder, salt, soft brown sugar, water and whisks. Now, there's one other thing I'm going to add to this, and that is chaat masala. I think it's got about 12 or 13 different spices in it, but yeah. the great thing about it, you just drop it on your tongue and it just gets your palate Pickles. just on... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's really exciting. The spice mix, chat masala, is available from specialist Indian suppliers. Over to Akhtar to make a start on his chutney. To a pan of hot oil, he adds coriander seeds and chopped garlic. So I'll put some green chilli into that as well. And these big chilies aren't particularly hot, are they? They're not, no, but, you know, it adds enough heat. That's the thing, a misconception about Indian food is that everything is really hot. And actually, it shouldn't be, because you should be able to taste everything. And if you have too much chilli, it just kills everything else, doesn't it? That's right. So it is about balancing the flavours out. Akhtar then adds fresh curry leaves, but you could use dried. And in goes the mango chutney. I think with mango chutney, it's worthwhile getting a relatively good quality one. But, yeah, we just pour that in to try and cool the pan down. Akhtar then pours into a blender with the remaining chutney from the jar. Finally, he adds coriander and blitzes. He adds a splash of water to loosen and salt. Akhtar finishes his chutney by finely dicing a red chilli for colour and then blitzes. Yeah, I can see there's bits of confetti of red chilli in there. Do I get to taste this now? You do, you do. Pretty good, actually. Mm, so that's delicious. With the chutney ready, it goes into the fridge to chill. Just let that cool down now. Two delicious, simple starters to kick off a curry night. But will the judges vote for Akhtar's onion and spinach pakoras or Ravinda's spicy potato cakes?